Welcome back to another lesson. I'm going to show you two simple tricks in this lesson that I hope will help transform your chord voicings uh, into something more interesting and mature sounding. Uh, really two simple tricks uh, and you've already heard them in the introduction. So let me just cover them quickly and I'll show you kind of how to incorporate them into your own playing. So here are the tricks. The first trick is to add either the second or the fourth degree of the chord or the scale on which the chord is built into your chord voicing. Uh, these are either called add two or add four chords. I'm slightly assuming that you know what triads are and how to build them. I'm going to give you a slight refresher now, but if you're not sure, you can take a look at my Piano Quickie series and I'll put a link down in the description. But Basically, every chord is built on a scale. I'm going to stick to triads so nobody accuses me of overcomplicating things. Let's take the C major chord. C major chord is built on the C major scale, which has C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C in it. So you have to know how to build the C major scale. And it's built on the first, third, and fifth degrees of the scale. And this gives you C, E, and G. Now you can play inversions or you can do different voicings of this chord. For example, I can take this C here and play it up here instead. So this is an inversion. So I'm gonna assume that you kind of know, know all of this already. And if not, go and check out the Piano Quickie series. Now, by adding the second or fourth degree, all I'm saying is either add the second degree of the scale and for the C major scale, it's a D, or the fourth degree, which for a C major scale is an F. So instead of playing this boring triad voicing, you either play the add two version, so I'm adding the two, or the add four, which is slightly less common, but still sounds good in many situations. Let's go back to what I played in the beginning and I'll, I'll kind of show you how uh, it, it's incorporated. So pretty much wherever you see a triad, try adding either the second or the fourth degree of the scale. For example, at the beginning I've played a C major chord, but I've added the second degree. Here's another example uh, when playing the G major chord. So I'm playing a G double bass in the left hand and I'm playing an inversion of G major in the right hand. I have B, D and G, which are the third, fifth and first degrees of the G major scale. And in the piece itself, if you go back, you'll see that I've actually played in many places. So I've added this C here which is the fourth degree of the, C, of the G major scale. So this is a G add four. Another example, uh, let's take this F major chord. So I have F and F, a double bass in the left hand, and again, A, C and F, which are the third, fifth, and first degrees of the F major scale. And I can play an F add 2 if I just have my thumb play these two notes together because the G is the second degree of the F major scale. In fact, sometimes it's pleasing to even omit the third. And this gives you an interesting uh, kind of voicing in fourths. And just play this instead of an F major uh, chord. So I'm playing in the right hand a G, C, and F. For example, if I play a, just let's take a simple progression, a C to a G to an F. Let me play it with the simple voicings. And now let's add the second and fourth degrees where applicable. So 
So you can see on the notation on the top exactly which degrees I added when. And my cat agrees. So the second tip I'd like to share with you is what I call uh, a base on third, which basically means that wherever you see uh, a five one progression, you can play the base of the five on the third degree. Now this probably sounds like Chinese to many of you, uh, unless you're Chinese and then it sounds like another language, but let me simplify it. Basically, when you're playing a chord, like say a C major chord, and I'm playing the add two here, instead of playing the root note, consider playing one of the other degrees of the scale, which in this case are either E, which is the third, or G, which is the fifth. And most often, the third will sound in many situations, a lot more pleasing than the first. This is especially true if you're going into a chord uh, that has the bass next to the third. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're playing a C and then you're going into, the G, to, into an F. So here's a C major chord and here's an F chord, F major. So the C is the simple, C, E, and G, and the bass of C. And the F has a C, F, and A, and the base of F. Now, instead of playing, why don't we play So you see I'm playing the third degree of the C major scale, and then going into the root bass for F. Another example, let's say I'm going doing a G that goes into a C. G with the bass and the root, which is a G, and a C. So in the right hand I'm playing B, D, and G. Uh, and for the C major I'm playing a C, E, and, and G. Uh, in here as well we can take the third degree of the G uh, major scale and use that before going into the C major chord. Let's string both together. So I'm going to play C, C on the base of E, which is the third, going into an F, G, C. F on the base of third going into a B flat major. C going into an F. Now if you play it slowly then it doesn't connect but if I play it fast that is in the right tempo have a listen. So we've taken some boring trial chords and we've transformed them either by adding the second or the fourth degrees or by changing the bass we play in the left hand that is not sticking just to the root. <clears throat> in general, the kind of, I'm gonna leave you with, with this thought, uh, the, the right or the, sometimes the most pleasing chord voicing you can find is that which leads the voices with the least amount of motion. <clears throat> so when I, when I do something like this, it's better than doing better in some abstract sense. Of course, there's no better in art, but you see the distance I'm going with the bass in the left hand is smaller than if I just jumped between roots. So this 
is better than this. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time. If you've made it this far, then I'm happy to put in a shameless plug for my sister's online jewelry store. She makes handcrafted jewelry and has an online store uh, in Etsy. I'll put the link in the description of the video. You're welcome to check it out if that's your thing. That's it, and I hope to see you next time.